Volume here on the mixer. There we go. All right. We're good to go. We're here. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Hi. How you doing? I'm the Agent Dolger. I'm James. I'm here to hack on some Haskell this evening with you. Welcome. If this is your first time tuning in. It's nice to meet you. Um, so... Let me just uh, get things set up here. We're um, building a game here in Haskell. Uh, it's a roguelike style game based off of uh, an old, 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 old game from a long time ago. It was called Star Trek and later had many variants like Super Trek and things like that. Um, dating like way back to like the 70s, I think even as far back as then. And I used to play it a lot, and it's been a fun way to learn some terminal UI programming and um, things like that with uh, with Haskell. And using some other new libraries uh, that we haven't used a whole lot yet on stream that I've been kind of promising we would go into uh, to make our show like how you can write a different style of code. So like, we kind of do medium-ish projects, medium-sized projects on the stream. So like not like intro to Haskell type stuff, even though, but if you do want to stop and ask questions, please feel free at any point in time. Uh, but like, we, I want to show like, Haskell's like a real language. That doesn't sound right, but it, it's a practical language. You can build real stuff in it. That's what we kind of try and do, realistic type of stuff. So this is a game, it's a turn-based game, and it looks kind of like this. Uh, Lambda truck. Excuse me, I'm just. There we go. Lambda truck. So we got our info panel on the side here. We have our little map of the current sector. And we have like an enemy ship represented by that tile. Our ship represented by that S. That is the space station. Stars. We have phasers. We can fire phasers. We can raise our shields. We lower our shields. Um, Alright, so our shields go up. We can move in the sector. We can take a little damage. So we, it's our it's like a roguelike. It's our turn, then the enemy's turn, then our turn, then the enemy's turn. Uh, we can destroy that ship. Alright, they still got one last chance to fire on us. Uh, but we destroyed them. And we can dock with the space station, recharge our energy, energy and and replenish our hull and stuff like that. So we're getting quite a bit of gameplay going now. Uh, we've got this little dialogue system it's going pretty well, um, things of that nature. So we got some things to polish up here. Uh, I think we need to prevent the phasers from firing through the shields when the shields are up. Um, in Super Trek, I believe you can still fire the phasers through it, but if you're not, but it'll take like extra energy to do it, like a lot more energy than you're used to, um, in order to compensate. For, otherwise, you just leave your shields up and fire all the time, and, and take reduced damage from the enemy, right? Um, so it's kind of like a risk reward decision that's supposed to be there. And a couple of other things I would like to fix up in this too is. Uh, to get the energy transfer command going, which I think we started last week, so we should probably do that as well. Finish that up. And, uh, yeah. So let's, that's what we'll work on tonight, I think. So I'm gonna go into my project here, and I'm gonna open up my editor and get things going. Let's see, yeah, Emacs, that's the one. The one true editor. I kid. 
but not really, but kind of. Okie dokie. We'll get our builder going. All right, we'll use our test runner's builder in fast mode with file watcher. So it always recompiles and reruns the tests. Super handy. And there we go. Okay, let's open up our project. Not sure what that staff says anymore. Uh, we just added the transfer command. So let's start with that first and then we'll do the phaser firing thing with the shields and whatnot. So this is our main entry point. We need to go into simulation and mm, top level simulation module. All right, so we handle, this is our main game loop here, really. We take the command result, handling the command. This is called after the user presses enter on the command thing. We do stuff. Okay, so we handle the command. What do we do with the commands? With transfer, we go to handle transfer. So let's go there. All right, so right now it doesn't actually do anything. It just adds this dialog to the dialog screen. And so we actually need to transfer that amount of energy into shield strain. So I'm thinking if we need to, I don't know what the exact formula is in like Super Trek and stuff. I think like one energy per percentage point would be pretty good. Like, that might be pretty decent. So maybe we could try that. Okay, so let's take our amount. We'll multiply it down by 0 0.01. Let's go. Need to convert that. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then we need to use transfer amount. Uh, what is this? Do -do. Defaulting constraints. Yeah. I think we use double if I'm not mistaken, but uh, inference will figure it out in a second. We'll probably remove that type annotation once we zoom in on the ship. Um, state ship and we add this to the energy the energy the shield amount the shield amount shield power something like that Current amount to be oh, that's going to be plus transfer amount. That's not shield amount. What is it? If I go into simulation and look in my ship module, it is ship shield strength. There we go. A namespace it, qualify it, something like that. Adjust shield strength. There we go. One of them was gonna do it. 
I was going to get it eventually. So let's test this out. Make sure it feels all right. So we'll raise our shields. Okay, let's move 8-2. We take a hit. Our shield strength is down to 73. Let's transfer uh, five, 7 to the shield. So that should be 80. We did transfer seven, and then we took a little more damage. Okay, yes, which reduces our shield strength a little bit. That makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> um, how do we feel about the dialogue there? Transferring seven to the shields. Seven, seven what? Seven energy to the shields, engineer, you might say. Seven percent to the shields. Maybe increasing shields by blah 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 cents. Super important to game split gameplay, like new ludo narrative structures and blah blah blah. Very immersive, hundred percent. Cool. That uh, that transfers the enemy the ship the shields the shield. I like it. Shields up. Move eight two. Okay. Move eight three. Right, okay, shield strength is down. Transfer 10 energy. Go. Sick. Okay, that's good. Commit it and ship it. Let's go. Okay, implement. Transfer command. Transferring. Uh, Energy turns into um, X percent uh, shield strength. Okay, let's do the phasers thing. That's probably pretty important. So we go into combat. Under simulation combat and handle fire phasers, that's the one. All right, so in handle fire phasers, we need to check the shield state. If the shields are up, we don't fire. Not only do we want to compare to the ship's energy, uh, we could just case match here. Do something, shield down. Uh, okay, so then we just need to fill in this hole here. 
And I think we'll put some dialogue in that and uh, call it a day. Uh, we'll do it from combat. Okay, shields are up, Captain. We must first lower the shields. Uh, let me just bring that uh, over the left, break it up a little bit, just so it go over too much. see not exhaustive pattern matches so let's fix that error while we're here that warning and I think any case an amount is greater than 50 this should just be otherwise There we go. Sorry. Little digression there, but we got that going. I think that'll combine the right there. Get rid of the warning. Clean that up a little bit. Looking good. Okay. Let's give it a shot. See what happens. Yeah. Raise our shields. Let's move in. All right. If we try to fire our phasers now. There we go. Combat. Shields are up, Captain. We must first lower our shields in order to fire phasers. Of course, if we do shields down, we we'll take another hit. And then we can fire phasers to destroy this sucker. Okay. Of course, we haven't implemented the game over yet for the hull going down to zero or below zero. So um, there you go. So that's all like our little combat scenario right there uh, in the game. Kind of worked out. Um, we can now transfer more energy to the shields. And we can move on to other greater things. Super. Okay, so let's see, what else do we need to do? <laughs> uh, we could implement torpedoes. 
Those are a thing, also part of combat. Torpedoes you can fire with shields up uh, with no penalty, but you only have a limited supply of them. You have to get them by docking at star bases. You can only carry so many at a time. That could be cool. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do torpedoes. We're gonna need those. Let's commit this. Bang. And apply this change will prevent firing uh, phasers while shields up. Okay. So, let's go to the ship. We can uh, add ship torpedoes. Torpedoes? Torpedoes. I can smell it like that. Let's see how it goes. Line all this back up. That's nice. Okay, of course, this is gonna cause a few type errors we're gonna have to fix in various places because I use constructor exactly as it is. Let's see, that's probably in the test code in state. Probably not too many places for the ship. Initial torpedoes. Let's say five torpedoes. That's what you're gonna start with. Okay, and then then the Tesco's gonna have to start complaining. So let's go fix all that. Starting at 68. Well, let's go. I feel like it's probably a good time to introduce a smart constructor for our ship. Or like an initial ship state. I don't want to do that. Save for enemy. Success! We are green again. Okay, so let's torpedoes. Okay, we're gonna need to implement the command to handle torpedoes, and then we're gonna have to think about how we're gonna actually like simulate torpedoes. So in normal trek, I believe torpedoes fire in a direction. You give it a direction, a vector to go in, and it'll go in a line. And then we have to figure out the line because we're in a tile based world, what that means, and how to move the torpedo along it. So it either hits something or misses and blows up at, like, outside the torpedo range. Um, and then I think, I think torpedoes might even have splash damage, which you could probably do. Anyway. Let's do the command first. That's pretty straightforward. We know how to add commands. Okay, let's check out. Yeah, that's good. Add ship torpedoes. I don't 
the next battle. Torpedoes. Torpedoes. Yeah, I spelled it with OS. Yeesh. There we go. Okay. Brain fart. Done. Let's see how many more we get throughout the evening. Okay. Hopefully no more. We go to Source, uh, Lambda Trek, and. Alright. We did transfer, now we're gonna fire torpedoes. Fire torpedo. Okay. So, I think the command should take a value of degrees. So that's pretty easy for people to imagine. Like 360 degrees, maybe? Um, this could get a bit of be, become a bit of a nightmare for us to calculate. We'd have to do like some kind of Bresenham line algorithm to figure out the path the torpedo would take. And if the enemy ship intersects with that line. But it could be pretty cool, maybe? I don't know. Let's, well, let's see if I'm imagining things here and look what Super Trek would do. A four ton on torpedoes. So you can launch a number of them? Okay, at target. Oh, yeah, directly at target. Okay, that, that's way better. For some reason, I thought it was um, directional. Okay. Okay. Okay, so target would be like, like for the move command, right? Two, six, one, ten, four, seven. Ooh, that's that's a little tricky. <laughs> um, maybe because it does splash damage. Okay, so what I'm thinking for our torpedoes is that you fire a number of them, you give it a sector to hit. We can do this level of the command too, where if you say fire two, you have to give me two coordinates or four numbers. If you give me three, you have to give me six numbers. I think we can do that too as part of the parser. And then uh, we might like limit the number of torpedoes you can fire at a time to like something reasonable. Maybe three. Three is probably enough because that's a lot of numbers to keep track of. Okay, so then that means fire torpedo gives a number and a certain number of coordinates. Um, hint, hint, errors. This is gonna be a little bit interesting because like this the number, the length of this is gonna depend on like that int, but. We'll need to do anything special for it. So we'll just document the command here. Um, fire X number of torpedoes at um, specified targets. One's one target per torpedo. Okay, we'll add a turn cost for that. Say one. We'll probably end up tweaking these before. You know, 
as you go along. Okay. So then we need a parser for the fire torpedo command. So we go to the command parse module. And we're going to need parse. Uh, torpedo. That's going to be a read P. And we're either going to return a command parse error or a valid command. It's going to be the torpedo command. First thing we have to do is match our command string. Which we'll say is torpedo. We skip spaces. Okay. We definitely need to parse the amount of torpedoes to fire as a digit. And then we need to collect the list of pairs of numbers. So we're going to need sub, a sub parser for that to make that fairly straightforward to implement. So that will probably be like um, chords. Parse coordinates, and then, and, this, and then we could do some validation here of what we parsed out before we construct the command. If it's not valid, we can return command parse error, and otherwise we return the command. So we would have to check that the amount is within range, that the length of chords depend is that that is correct, right? Okay, so let's say you can't fire more than three torpedoes. Um, we could do... I'm out. Oh wait, there's a function for we could do this with. Guard, I believe. might be better than doing a bunch of if statements. Guards, guards. is greater than zero and amount is less than or equal to three. Okay, I want to be able to write something like that. Uh, we don't have that variable in scope. Control, this one's controlled by conditional. Base control that monad might have on. Let's try that. Okay, that might have worked. We have a hole here. And 
then we want to say actually we probably move this into here and then we have another guard uh think of chords it's equal to amount And assuming I can implement parse coordinates, then we have uh, pure. But I don't think this is going to work because we, we want to return command parse error. I'm not sure what guard would do here. Uh, um, uh, torpedo command, our torpedo command. Fire torpedoes. So far, so good, except for implementing parse coordinates. So let's implement parse coordinates. I believe that should be a command parse error. And this is, instead of command, it's going to be a list of tuples of int int. Okay, so here we're going to get a num. We're going to skip a space. We're going to get another number. And then we're going to construct our tuple. Y, we'll call it. And then we can Construct a tuple x, y, cons that on to mm. I'm gonna get that x, y, I wanna cons it onto the natural recursion here, but we're in a parser here. So, I think we have a parser that can parse lists. I think we just need to parse this tuple. And we might need, just like we did for some of the other sub-parsers, um, for like shield state and stuff like that. We're gonna just skip out of the command, the either command parser a bit. And just do a read p of int int, like this. And then I'll make this parse coordinate. And then coordinates via read p either in a parse error or list of int. int. And this will just be many one of uh, parse coordinate. We're gonna bind that. And That's fine. Now this this is the kind of junky part. This isn't working like I didn't think it would because reasons. 
Uh, we could just use if statements. We don't have to get that super fancy or anything. If the amount is greater than zero and the amount is less than equal to 30, then something else error. Say so if the amount is less than zero, or the amount is greater than three, um, then error. Else, if the length the coordinates. If we get the length of boards, um, it does not equal amount, then error, else pure, all right, fire torpedo. have a couple of holes here okay so our command parse errors where do we find those there we go invalid fire torpedo So in this case, um, number of torpedoes must be uh, greater than zero. Uh, which is less than or equal to three. I don't know if that's a good message for regular people, <laughs> but it works for me. Well, let me know what you think, chat. Yeah, we gotta pure that up. Torpedoes. Okay, and then we gotta fix our render command parse error in the UI. Invalid fire torpedo. Move the unused imports. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. 
I see what you're pulling down, putting down here. That's a little redundant. Um, and then there's just a couple of places of redundancy it's pointing out. I think it's probably that. Yeah, one twenty-seven. Oh, line twenty-seven. Uh -huh. Yes. So we could probably reduce the amount of code here a little bit. Uh, X Y with parse coordinate. Just like that. Perfect. Okay, so if that parser is good and works, then we can add it to the parse command here. Uh, parse torpedo. Jen, Jen. Okay, and now we just need to go back to simulation, add a handler for it. That doesn't do a whole lot, and then that's the command added. Fire torpedo. Handle fire torpedo. Let's put it somewhere near fire phaser. Handle fire phasers. Which is in combat, I suppose. Well, let's put it in there. Let's do it after do fire. After all the phaser stuff. Right about here. Handle fire torpedo. Oh, that has to return uh, uh, command result, right? make it say something basic. Say dialogue, combat, firing torpedoes. And then um, not performed the other one. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Simulation. It's like denied or something. Did not. Hmm. 
That's right. Okay. I was right. There you go. And a fire torpedo. Okay. So. Let's test out the command. Uh, did we do the parser right? Does it work? Torpedo. Let's see. One. A two, two. No command. What did I do? Parse. 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 Torpedo. Skip space. Digits. Coordinates. Oh, I might need a skip space. Or start parsing coordinates. That's probably a thing. Let's fire one torpedo at one one. Okay. If we try to torpedo uh, four. Okay. Number of torpedoes must be. So let's do three. One, one. So then we get the error commander. Number of coordinates must match the number of torpedoes. So if we go torpedo three, then we should do one, one, two, two, three, three. That one should be valid. Probably not working then. And so many one has to return at least one. What I th what I th oh what I think is happening here is that we're not skipping the space between the last digit after parsing this coordinate. So we need a um, I don't know why it wants to combine that. Anyways, we need a way to uh, sort of like many one but like intersperse a parser in between each I wonder if read p has that. I know some of the better text parser combinator libraries do. Um, let's see. This is the one. So this this takes an extra parser in the middle that represents the separator. And the separator, that parser should consume its input. And then, um, yeah, so maybe we want set by one. And then we just need a white space parser to pass it. So if we go to coordinates, Set by one. Parse coordinate, and then we just need to pass in our parser here. Should be one white space character. Uh, we could even make skip spaces to keep it. Skip all. I 
I think that'll co compile. Okay, torpedoes. So let's do one, one, one. We know that one works. Okay. And if we do torpedo two, one, one, two, two, that should work too. Oh no, it's not. Okay. What did we do? Okay, we're gonna have to bug, bring out our good old friend, the debugger. There's not actually a debugger, we're just gonna import debug.trace. Qualified as debug. I'm gonna go to my parse torpedo command, parser. And we're just going to trace M. I'm just gonna print out what the parser actually parsed. Oh, sorry, uh, post positive is not the way we do it here. That one should work, okay. Bring in terminal. Accident. Close mine. And let's try it. Okay. Torpedo. One 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 one. Okay, it's not. Printing it out. Another better way to do this actually might be just write a quick little test. Let's do that. Test spec. Let's run a little quick little parser test. It should oops, uh, torpedo and. One target. So if we do torpedo one, we know this one works. I should satisfy is right. I need data dot either. I don't want that on fast. The file watcher. File watch. Boom. Make sure, and let's make that is left, and let's see if it fails. It should. Then we should get a failure, a test failure, just to make sure that we're actually executing that, everything's going well. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, and good parse torpedo, and we have two targets. Do two, we should get one, one is one, two, two is the second one. Uh, should be right, fire torpedo. Uh, two, and then we should have one, one, two, two.
Okay. So now let's see the next step. The next thing I can do. is probably just not returning. It's probably only parsing one element. This is basically what I'm thinking is happening here. Bring back the trace sound. I think we should be able to see that now with the test runner. So like Rick isn't chewing up our UI, our, our terminal. And we'll just bring that back. Sometimes I tend it can get be a little bit tricky to get the step by parser to kind of work the way you expect it to or want it to. Yeah, so it's only it's only parsing one. Okay, so it is definitely something wrong with the way we're doing step by. Or the way our parse board and it parser is working. Skip spaces. I wonder if we can replace that with just car space. doing we're not getting to EOF maybe okay that actually did seems to have fixed it yeah okay we just weren't getting to the end of the string it, it can be a little bit touchy with Barcer sometimes. All right, so let's get rid of the debugging. We're good. And, yeah. So now we know it should be good. Two, let me go one, 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 one. All right, there we go. Super. Torpedo. Three. One, two, two, three, three. Super. Oh, I do have a little debug tracing going on in the main program there, so let's get rid of that. Where did I put that? Good. 
Looks good. Looks good. Here, let's just stop the look at the build. Uh, torpedo. Three, one, one, two, two, three, three. There we go. Okay. That was good. Let's commit this all then. Add torpedo command. Okay, so in the case where we just we just give it a bunch of coordinates and we try to fire at those things. Okay, so our command handling and simulation needs to pass in those parameters. number of torpedoes and the coordinates to fire them to. Now we can write our code. We'll pass those over to handle fire torpedo. Update this. And uh, like that. And turn that. Okay, so let's see, how do we want to do this? We can, well, first, there's a first, first things first. Obviously, if we don't have enough torpedoes, we should not do anything. Uh, we should probably just say something and just not perform the command. We could do that. Oh no, we're gonna to need to dig into the state for that, so we, we will need to make this a do. Okay, so we're gonna to have to pull out the ship. And. We compare the num to the ship um, torpedoes um, so we're Less than, we're good. We're greater than, or we're equal. If we're greater than, we're not good. If we're anything else, then we're fine. We can fire them. Yeah. Combat. We do not have. Are we? What's more helpful? We only have X torpedoes left. So, um, ship, ship dot torpedoes. Torpedoes left. Captain. Uh, 
And then we can return pure denied. Right, we're gonna have to pack that. Do I not have tea in place? I probably don't. Oh, I do. Just not here. We're qualified. Data.txt as tea. Do it like this, as far as an operator precedence thing. Okay, and then in any other case, we can continue. Okay, we can actually just say dialogue combat here. I am firing torpedoes and just check that what we've got so far is good. I haven't used cords yet. We'll ignore it. Okay. Uh, we're rebuilt. So let's try firing. Oh. Let's just to fire one. Torpedo. One, one. And we, so that's two. We started with five. Um, do three. That should be fine. And if we try again one more time, this should fail with our... Oh, I didn't... Oh, no. Oh, because we're not subtracting the memo, that's why. So this isn't working yet. And we can't say more than three. So we should probably... Uh, add this... Submit this is a work in progress. The fire torpedo. Okay, and uh, let's add it to the UI. The number of torpedoes. Our info panel. Uh, energy, hull, shields, shield strength. Let's add it after shield strength. Torpedoes. Let's fix that. And... We just need to show... Game state. Game state. Ship. Ship. The torpedoes. And that'll show what's happening, right? On stream, so. Um, we see we have torpedoes 5 here, but of course we're not updating the amount of torpedoes after we use the command here. And it's 5 foot 3, 1 long, 2 2, 3 3. If I could do the command properly. 
you say eye firing torpedoes, we haven't ac actually decremented the torpedoes, so. We'll never get to that. So in order to test that condition, add torpedoes out to input panel. Um, so in order to really test this out, we need to decrement that and handle fire torpedo. Okay. So we can zoom in on the ship. And we can set the ship dot torpedoes. And we'll subtract. And that should be enough now that we could trigger this. Go torpedo. Three. One, one, two, two, three. So we have tor two torpedoes left. If we try another one, 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 two, two, three, three. We only have two torpedoes left, Captain. Okay, perfect. Okay, I like that strategy. Can't have fire torpedoes. We only have X torpedoes left. And torpedo count. Okie dokie. So, the next part of this is to actually fire those torpedoes at the ship and do the enemy damage and all that stuff. Simulate the explosions, so on and so forth. Okay, how do we want to structure this? Well, we got to go through each Awarded it. So for each element in chords, if you're going to bring this go. Torpedo Y. Okay, so we need to check if there's an enemy there at that coordinate. And damage it. If there is. Otherwise, the torpedo blows up and does nothing. So I want to write something like uh, hit enemy Mm-hmm. Where I 
activate the Torpedo X and the Torpedo Y. And this is going to return a maybe if there is there. If there's nothing, right, and then just should give me the enemy index and the enemy, I think. I think that's kind of what I want. So we look at how phaser damage is done. Map over the enemies, calculate the new damage. Yeah and into enemies so that we can do the array update stuff, right? So they're in an array, in the, they're stored in an array in the sector, so we need an index into that array, plus the enemy. So let's think we can write that. Then in the nothing case, we know what to do here. Now we say dialog. Combat. Uh, torpedo detonated in empty space, Captain. Detonated at text uh, pack go torpedo X. That's all we'll do there. Uh, if we hit an enemy, let's just say, let's just do the dialogue for now. So hit enemy doesn't exist at the moment, so we need to implement that. Um, so that takes a int, int. We can even make it just take a tuple. And maybe. Just 
of this powder matching out. Go with coal ward and then a T dot pack. Show the core directly, because the, the show representation of the tuple is actually going to look pretty okay. Um, we're going to ignore this for now. Okay, let's force that rebuild just to make sure. Uh, So, torpedoes. Five, three, one, one, two, two, eight, three. Okay, we got undefined because we hit the enemy, so that's good. And if we just do fire torpedo our torpedoes off in a torpedo, let's do one at one one. We do get undefined again. Oh, because we, we're gonna we're gonna pattern match. Yeah, uh, on that no matter what age cord we get. Okay. Um, so this let's just make it always return nothing for a second. So let's implement hit enemy. So we have to search the array of enemies based on this coordinate. The enemies are stored. Let's go to the enemy. So they have a position X and a position Y. And they're stored in a sector. In the array here. We basically need um, kind of a find function here. Find by coordinate. Might actually be where we the function we want, might want to move hit enemy out because the type is going to be exactly the same. Uh, sector sector should be our first argument. that there we go no we want we want him to be the first argument uh, recording to be all right so we're gonna get the sector enemy ships out Filter, we're going to change that to the, get the association list. We're going to filter the association list by new function. Um, is at 
coordinate. Chord. Oh, it's going to be on the second element of the association list. And Bob's your uncle. It's down here. It's down here. Down here. Where is at coordinate? It is a function from our coordinate. An enemy. To bool. Let's go see uh, chord X, chord Y, the enemy with the record, and we're just going to check that chord X is equal to enemy position X and Chord Y is equal to enemy position Y. I got record wild cards enabled in this module to do that. Filter we want. Find. Just from data dot list. Okay. Okay, so that should be the thing that we want. Let's give it a hit enemy. Let's cha change that up for enemy at cohort. And then we have to give the, the sector. Torpedo one at eight three. Enemy hit. Perfect. Okay, so the next step uh, is to actually do apply the damage to that enemy. Update that enemy state. Uh, when we do that. I think we should move the dialogue up to the top. Even further, even further. No, not too far. Here. Okay, so we say I firing torpedoes. Any hits, sir? Um, have some functions. I think we're applying damage to enemies. with phaser damage.
Alright, so we update the game state sector. And use this array update syntax. That's right. I don't want to help a bunch of FedEx. We're doing a bit of combat. We could probably make something uh, out of that, but let's just do it this way for now just to get it to work. Okay. So here we have the enemy index. In fact, we can do enemy X here and enemy. Then we can get the damaged enemy. that handy dandy apply damage function and we're gonna apply let's do a fixed amount for now or no actually photons usually uh, completely destroy an enemy So they explode near an enemy. Yeah, so they, they simulate like explosion. Let's just do it like if you actually hit the target directly, um, you're doing a crap ton of damage. You can even call it like destroy enemy. And uh, we'll just give it the enemy. And then, uh, we zoom in on the game state sector. And we set the uh, enemy ships. using our handy dandy update and that becomes hits right dot slash, slash and we give our enemy X and our damaged enemy Destroy enemy. And that just takes an enemy to enemy. And all we do here. Set their hit points to zero. We just use record update syntax for that. No biggie. I did mean enemy ships. Thank you, GHC. Super.
Okay, cool. I expected it to compile. It did. Let's test her out. Take her for a spin. Let's fire our torpedoes one at 8 3. Enemy hit, sir. Enemy destroyed. Nice. Ah. Uh... Yeah, I have to fix that bug. So that, that bug happened because of this thing here. This warning I've been ignoring. Um, so don't ignore your warnings forever. We should go fix that now. But uh, I, think, I think that works. So we can commit that and then we'll fix the other. And then we'll reorganize, rejigger everything, and get ready for push. Call it a night because it's getting close to the end of this stream, friends. Uh, torpedo dummy enemy. Okay. That is uh, simulation line fifty nine. Here. Rip torpedoes. I really need to fix that function because that's gross. But there you go. Oh, the other thing we need to do with uh, handle torpedoes before we push everything is also say pure formed. All right, and that signals that the enemy can or enemies can take their turn. That we actually did fire the torpedoes and everything. Okay, cool. Go torpedo. One, eight, three, or eight, two, say. Ooh, it missed. Uh, one, eight, three. Destroy the ship. Uh, we get the combat log looking pretty good for that as well. Torpedoes counting down. Took two turns firing those torpedoes. Good, good, good. I probably should have an energy cost, but we can tweak that next week. I think the basics are done. Okay, so add that in. Just quick review. No, no, no. Yeah, just my little tweak. Okay. Let's rebase up until there. Squash everything into it. Word. Add the trivia accounts to the panel. When fired, yeah, we actually just destroy it. We hit. Hide that other one. There we go. Okay, that looks good. It looks like a good commit. Set of commits to push up. So, let's do it. Pushing. So, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. Thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure. I hope you uh, come in back next week. I usually stream on Tuesday evenings at 10 after 8 in the evening. All the code for this project you've seen tonight is up here on GitHub. I'm Agent Ultra. This is Lambda Trek. It's on the, the Lambda Trek repo, so you can check it out there if you want, for whatever reason. Um, look at the link above. 
It's declarative.tv. There are a lot of other cool streamers doing programming in other languages like Haskell and others. Um, there's a Discord server there. You can go there and we can chat. There's a channel there for the stream. And we can chat about your projects or anything you saw here. Or, you know, whatever. So check that out. Uh, of course, you can also follow me on the socials. I'm on the Mastodon at the types.pl server. Um, as Agent Ultra. I'm there as well. So that's me. Follow me there. Send me your hot takes, whatever it is. It's all good. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you next week. Uh, let's just see if maybe there's someone we could read and um, then we'll, we'll call it there. So I am going to go over. Hopefully there's nothing too inappropriate. You never know with the Twitch recommended algorithms these days. Nobody I know is online. Let's see, Arc. Ugh. Let's scroll down. Software game dev. Check it out. Elemental Legion. Quaternions, bishops. Let's go. Let's raid them, sure. Dur -dur -dur. Boom, let's go. All right, been a pleasure. Take care.